Okay, before you watch this video, two things that everybody needs to know. First of all, all of these are recorded and edited at least a day or two in advance, some of them even more. And any changes that occur between recording and uploading, those I will discuss in the first episode of WNBA Weekly. If someone gets hurt during preseason, odds are I'm going to miss it by like an hour or so. And then I will talk about that on May 13th when I upload the first episode of the season. Second of all, I am not in any way associated with the WNBA or any of their sponsors or affiliates. I am not part of the Associated Press. I'm just a guy who loves basketball and wants to talk about the game that I love. So, yeah, all of these are just my own personal opinions based on the observations that I've made. I do take into account some of the things that the media and players and other people will say, but at the end of the day, these are my opinions. So if I happen to say something negative about one of your favorite teams, deal with it. Greetings and welcome to the first installment of the 2017 WNBA preseason power rankings where I take a look at all of the moves that every team made during the offseason and based on that I try to judge how many wins I think they will have during the regular season. Starting at number 12, the team that I think will be the worst in the league and get the number one draft pick is... The San Antonio Stars. They've had a long, very painful run. I mean, I'm in San Antonio and I consider myself a fan, but it's so hard to root for them and right now it's just so hard to expect anything from them. They've had a, they've had a rough run and in the past three years, they've had the number three overall pick, then the number two overall pick, then the number one overall pick. They just keep getting slowly worse. In the off seasons, the biggest losses we had, two staples of the franchise bet who have been stars in this league since they got drafted. We traded away Daniel Robinson and Jane Appel retires. Not to mention coach and GM Dan Hughes, he decides to step down. He's replaced by two former players, Ruth Riley at GM, Vicky Johnson as the new head coach. When I look at the stars and their outcome for the season, the biggest question in my mind is can they stay healthy? They have plenty of talent there, but you've had a lot of their biggest names missing a lot of games in the previous few seasons, and that's definitely hurt them. Kelsey Plum, she hasn't played a single game yet, but there are a lot of expectations being heaped on her already. I'm sure all of you have seen the graphic in the last nine years, eight times the first overall pick has been Rookie of the Year. And the one time that she wasn't, it's because Elena Deladon was the second overall pick. I don't think Kelsey has too much to fear from Elena Coates this year. So with that in mind, will she be able to live up to that high, that expectations? Obviously, she's a scoring machine. Uh, so I think she'll definitely be an offensive punch, but also how well can she play? Will she play enough to not only win Rookie of the Year, but could she also potentially win Six Woman of the Year? I don't know the statistic. I still have, I keep telling myself to look it up, but I haven't. How many people have won Sixth Woman of the Year at the same season and Rookie of the Year the same season? I know Candace Parker won Rookie of the Year and MVP the same season, but I don't expect that much from Kelsey. I do expect her to play well. Also, six woman of the year is potential only if she stays on the bench. There are a lot of different scenarios in which Kelsey could be a starter. Mariah or K Mac could get injured, or the coach could just think that Kelsey plays well enough and decide to put her in the starting lineup anyways above one of those two. Or maybe even she just puts all three of them in the starting lineup, go small ball. Either way, we already know she's a versatile enough playmaker, talented enough, at least on the offensive end, to add a scoring punch and make a really solid impact, make them a little more competitive. She is certainly going to make a splash this year. When I look at the stars, the reason that I put them so low is because while the talent is obviously there, I think they're just, we just need to have patience and let them develop a little. I think there just needs to be a bit of an adjustment period. I expect them to have a lottery pick next year and probably the year after that. I just don't see star power on this team. I see a lot of talented young players who are capable of making an impact. But is there like a Diana Taurasi, Elena Della Don level of playmaker here? At least not yet. I think we need time for someone to actually break out. So my assessment, San Antonio Stars, very talented team, but they're in a very tough league that isn't gonna just sit back and wait for them to try and figure it out. 
They're gonna have it a little rough this year, but the pieces are in place for them to be successful down the road. So that's it for this segment. Tune in tomorrow when I talk about the team that I rank number 11 on my list. And until then, this has been The Fan Perspective. I'm your host, Nathan Lyle. Have a great day.